There's a man, his name, his name is Jesus. Mm. He used to live in this world where I'm going through. Mm. He died and is gone. So what more do you want him to do? Jesus of his love and his grace my heart was overwhelmed to know a king would take my place I cried Lord I'll go with you every step of the way that's all I can do, Lord, for my debts to repay, and I love him too much to fail him now. Come on, sing it. Love him too much to break. promised the Lord I'm gonna make it somehow you know I love him too much to fail listen when I told him how much I love him it was easy to say, but I find it harder to prove my love when temptations came my way. But what can prove a broken promise? Oh, I count it all but lost when I caught a glimpse of true love hanging on the coral cross listen when I told him how much I love him oh it was easy easy to say but I found it harder to prove it 
when temptations came my way. But what can prove a broken promise? I count it all but lost when I caught a glimpse of true love hanging on the cruel cross. And I love him too much. I love him too much to fail him. I love him too much. I love him too much to break my vow. Oh, I promised the Lord I'm going to make it somehow. You know. I love him too much to fail him now. Oh, we love him. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love him. Oh, don't you love Jesus? Amen. I love him too much to fail him now. I don't want to fail him. With God's help, my intentions, my ambition, and I'm sure that's the same I speak for all of us, is to please the Lord. Is to please the Lord. All right, Mario is going to get us up on screen. We're going to get to the word of the Lord today. Amen. So, I want to talk to you about uh, what we've been talking about for a while now. We're closing in on this series. Amen. Some of the saints said, let's continue this. This has been working in our lives. This has been just, uh, God's been just doing wondrous works in our lives. And let's just um, continue it. And so we, want, we, we decided I, we all concord. We all, don't you just love the prayer series? Amen. We love the purse series. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Amen. It's not coming on up there. It's been a blessing. Give him a minute or two. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. So God is a good God. Yes. All right. So I, I want to tell you this. I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to shout because I don't want to offend you less. You, you, you don't want to hear it very loud, but don't stop praying. Saints, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop. Don't stop praying. The Lord told me to tell you, don't stop praying. Amen. Don't stop praying. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I'm going to hear. <laughs> God says, if you come and talk to me, I'm going to hear. Oh, so don't stop praying. Why would you stop praying when he promised he's going to hear you? I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive you of your sins. I'm going to heal your land. I'm going to heal your land. Don't stop praying. If you want to see your land heal, don't stop praying. Praise God. Don't stop praying. Go before your master. Amen. Aren't you so gr grateful for Calvary? Calvary has made the way clear. The veil of the temple has been rent in twain. And we now have access to come boldly to the throne of God and to talk to him about issues that you don't even talk to anybody else about. You can come to the creator and talk to him face to face. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. We've been praying and I'm telling you, I'm hearing it. I'm sensing it. I am seeing it. Revival is coming. Somebody ought to clap your hands. Come on. Revival is coming. Revival is coming. Revival is coming. Where is it coming, preacher? It's coming to our lives. It's coming to our homes. It's coming into our marriage. It's coming to our children. It's coming in our mind, in our health, in our city, in our country. Revival is coming. 
it's coming. I sense it. You've got to be excited. You've got to, you've got to see it happening before it happens. You've got to feel it before it happens. You've got to begin to celebrate it before it happens. Oh, dead things are coming back to life. Dormant things have been resurrected. Things that appear dead. God is putting life into it and it's beginning to breathe again. Revival is coming. Let me tell you something. Don't pray. It's a waste of time to pray and not expect God to send revival. Why ask him for the rain and not expect it? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Are you expecting rain? That's why he said to the woman, I want you to go get vessels. And, and, and don't just get your few, get you a lot of vessels. How many vessels you come with is an indication of how much all you expect. Oh, I don't hear nobody in this church. If the Lord tells you, go get vessels. It's going to rain and you just show up with, with, with a one liter can. You don't want nothing. <laughs> if the Lord says to you, I'm going to bless you, go get vessels, and you show up with, 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 with this gallon bottle. You don't want nothing. Go get vessels and get you more vessels. It is going to rain. My God, there are two perspectives to that that excites me. There are two parts of that that excites me. Let me tell you something. If the Lord says it's going to rain, the first part that excites me, if God says it, it's no lie. That part, more than anything else, excites me. If God says he's going to bless you, that's no lie. If God says, I'm going to, you're going to be blessed going out and coming in, that's no lie. If God says, I'm going to give you victory over your enemies, that's no lie. If God says, I'm going to make you an overcomer, that's no lie. If God says, you're the head and not the tail, that's no lie. If God says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, that's no lie. If God says, you're blessed and not cursed, that's no lie. God says it. And he's not a man that he should lie. God speak. God is truth. <laughs> so that part excites me. That's not the president talking. It's God. That's not my mother talking. It's God. That's not my best friend talking. It's God. And if God says it, that settles it. So that part excites me, Rachel. That part excites me. The second part that excites me, if God says, Matis, I'm going to bless you, well, it, it, it excites me because I could use me a blessing. Oh, 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 you see, I could understand if you don't get excited because maybe you're okay and maybe you're okay. But, 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 but Delano, I could use me a blessing, boy. I have me two boys and college is coming. I could use me a blessing. I have me a wife and family. I could use me a blessing. I have a vision. I have purpose to accomplish. I need God's blessing. Oh God, is there anybody in here who needs Imani? You need a blessing, girl? You, you, you're just a young girl. Your, your whole life is ahead of you. You're going to need God's blessing. You're going to need the hand of God to be upon your thunder. You, we need God. I wonder, can I preach to you loud in this church? It echoes, but permit me. Wonder, we need God's blessings. And it excites me that God says, I'm going to bless you. Revival is coming. Expect it. Expect it. Expect the drought to pass. Expect the toughness. Your life is never going to always be tough. It's never going to always be uphill. Expect God to show up and break the cycle of the difficulty. I feel God in my soul. I feel like prophesying for a little bit. If it's not yours, leave it alone. But somebody came in here who wouldn't mind God breaking the back of poverty. Who wouldn't mind God breaking the back of sickness and, and bad news. Who wouldn't mind that the next servant that comes, comes with a different message. To tell you that it's going to rain and deliverance has come. Good God from glory and victory is about to hit your house. Somebody who needs it, come on give God glory up in this room. Oh, if it's not yours, leave it alone, leave it alone. But good God, I could use it. 
I could use it. I could use me a blessing. I could use me. A, I could use me. Do it, Lord. Somebody holler, do it, Lord. Come on, somebody holler, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it. Yeah, I hear it. And the thing is that my wife heard it. We're hearing it. Carla, you hear it? Shanice, you hear it? Benja, you hear it? I bet if you ask Caleb, baby Caleb, hear it. Lord Jesus, as Xavier, you hear it? It's about to rain. Blessings is about to over. You shall be overcome with blessings. God is about to do something miraculous. Somebody, Lord, I feel I'm moving on, but I can't move on. It's going to rain. God is about to show up in your house. God from heaven. Let me talk to somebody who's listening to us because you see we're living in this time when we, we have to realize that some of our members are not here today. They're, 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 some, some, some people have not come yet. They're coming. Uh, Suzette and, uh, and, and, and Angie and pa Paul and, and, and uh, Tommy and, 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 and Vincent. Good God. Let, let's talk to Joshua and Israel. It's going to rain. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's, it's going to rain. Expect God. Gloria. It's going to rain in your house. It's going to rain in your house. Somebody holler, do it, Lord. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's, not a, that, that's not a part of what I, I, it's on my side. I just feel the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we've got to be pliable in the hand of God. Oh, God, to say what he bids us say. It's unhealed. It's going to rain, boy. Expect it to happen to our lives. Revival is coming. Our families, our churches, our city, our country, and our world. Revival is coming. Woo! And good God, we've been praying. And he says it's going to happen. I want to share with you seven blockers to be watchful of, to be aware of. To be, to, to be careful, to be cognizant of seven blockers that every believer needs to be aware of. When you go down on your knees to pray, I want to tell you about seven blockers. Seven blockers that gets in the way of you and res your, your, your results that you so desire. Prayer blockers to know and to avoid. When you pray, I want you to look out for these seven prayer blockers. Write them down. Good God, and we're going to burst through these blockages. We're going to burst through these blockages in Jesus' name. Prior blockage, number one. Because it's not as though we're not praying. We've been praying. And some people have been praying for a long time, but they haven't been seeing results. And we, as a developing church now, we have to slow this down to ensure that our members, our brethren, know how to get victory in prayer. We don't just want to be beating the ear. We don't just want to be going through the motion of praying. It ought not just to be a ritualistic practice, but it has to be then that we are seeing what we are praying for. Because if God says he's going to do something, God will do it. We'll do it. But there are times when what we seek from God is held up, is blocked. And blockage number one is when you pray your will to be done as opposed to God's will. When you go into prayer, you can't go into prayer wanting what you want. Oh, you can't go off into prayer. Never go into prayer. And it's just all about what you want. You must seek God's will for your life. And might I add, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, ain't nothing better for your life than God's will. If you get God's will done, you don't need nothing else. Hey, the place that you don't want to live is outside of the will of God. We want to live in the will of Almighty God. So when we go to him, we are saying to him, thy will be done. 
Let's go, Maria. Let's go. Thy will be done. This is the confidence, 1 John 5, 14, that we have in approaching God. When we come to God, we know that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. It is not you asking what you want, but you, whatever you want or whatever you're asking is in alignment with what God's will is for your life. Amen. You have to practice this. To go to God and never get any result is to go to God with all about what you want. You have to go to God wanting what God wants. What do you want? What wilt thou have me to do, O God? What wilt thou have me to do? How can my life please my master? Because we belong to him. We've been preaching uh, Sunday after Sunday and teaching how we belong to the Lord. We are his servants. And so when we go to him, the Lana, we are saying, God, may my life bring you glory. May my life please you. So it is absolutely not about what we want, but what he wants. Amen. It's what he wants. I, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this and I'm saying sometimes we go off praying. And we get emotional. It's not about being emotional. And ain't nothing wrong with being emotional if being emotional is in alignment with the will of God. Ain't nothing wrong with crying if crying aligns itself perfectly with the will of God. You got to find out what his will is. Go into his word and see what is his word saying as it relates to this issue that I am faced with. Oh, when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me. What? In this will I be, one thing will I desire. War is against you and one thing you desire is the presence of God. <laughs> You're not going off into prayer talking about, God, kill them, Jesus. Kill them, Lord. The enemy, the devil is a liar. Cut the neck from the body, Lord. Sever them, Jesus. Bring them into pieces. No. One thing have I desire of the Lord. That will I seek for. If God was to answer all our prayers, I'm convinced some of us would make him become a murderer. <laughs> if God was to do everything we ask him to do, God would have... <laughs> Thank you for not answering all my prayers, Jesus. Thank you. I think we ought to pray that. <laughs> Thank you for not having... For, <laughs> that you never answered all my prayers. So the war is against you, but your desire. <laughs> you find delight in the law of the Lord. You want to dwell in his house. You want to dwell in the secret place of the Lord. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Let me tell you something. Yes, man. Yes, man. That's the best place for you when war is raging. <laughs> oh, till the storm passes over and the thunder rose no more. Till the stars, the clouds roll forever from the sky. I'm hoarse, hold me fast. Let me stand in the hollow of your hand. That's the line I want. Keep me safe till the storm passes the enemy is, is kicking and raging. All you need to be is to be hid in the secret place of the Lord. There's a secret place in God where the enemy can't find you. Uh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said there's a secret place in God where the devil can't find you. He's looking but you're hid in the secret of the Lord. Woo! And you won't have to fight for yourself. Because the Lord will fight. Stand still. The Lord will fight for you. Is there anybody who, who, who's had that happen before? The Lord fought for you. Brought you into victory. You never had to pick up no phone and call nobody. 
come on testify you never had to pull a muscle you never had to go to your bed and worry God fought for you all you did was just sleep <laughs> oh God you just rest back in God everybody was yum, 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 yum. girl why don't you do this and why you should call the police and you're like you're resting in God hallelujah thy will be done so when you go to God in prayer quit going to him asking him about what you want and what you want or what you desire and when you want it and how you want it and how bad you want it and God if you don't do it by next week Friday I'm gone Don't do it by next week, Friday, I'm gone. You're praying it according to his will. So let me tell you something. If you want to get answer from God, you have to ask it according to his will. What will thou have me to do, O God? Let no part of my life resist the will of God. Let no part of my existence push against what you want for me. I know Paul says, my God, there is a warfare that's going on within me. And every time that I want to do good, is there anybody in here can testify, man? I love God. And I speak the truth in Christ. And I lie not. But there's a part of me that doesn't. <laughs> every one of us in here, we love God. But there is a part of us that doesn't. The flesh. Paul says, oh wretched man that I am. Who is going to deliver me from the body of this death? But thanks be unto almighty God who gives us the victory again and again. Victory is on its way. I said, I hear it. Revival is coming. You see, this is what. So this is where the challenge is for the believer. In dismissing what you want. And choosing what God wants. Because your flesh does not want what God wants. Is there a lively flesh who can say amen? amen. <laughs> I, I'm not the preacher who needs your flesh to validate what I'm saying. I've got mine. <laughs> Woo! Yes, man. Let me tell you, your flesh will tell you you're tired. Your flesh will tell you not, not today. Why are you going to church next week, Easter Sunday? Rest, girl. You have work tomorrow. I, I, I want to see you next week. <laughs> I want to see you next week. <laughs> I love you too. But, our fle but be careful now. You're, what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, G George, what I'm saying is our flesh will rob us victory. If you allow Xavier, if we allow our flesh, our flesh will rob us the victory that God intends for us to have. We have to pray the will of God, the will of God. So when you go into prayer, it's, it's thy will, O oh God. Thy will. What do you want? God, today is Monday. What do you want for me? What, do, what, what would you want for me to do today? Today is Tuesday, Lord. How might my life please you? Lord, may my life bring you glory. If I'm too high, bring me down. If I'm, uh, if I'm resisting your will, God, get me in line, Lord. But I must, my life must say yes to the will of God. Let's go. Listen to Proverbs 28 and 20 and verse 9. He that turneth away his ears from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. God says if you turn away your ear from hearing my law, what the scripture says, don't even come praying, I hate your prayer. <laughs> sit down, buddy, sit down. You hear that? That text is hard. God says if you come in to pray and it's not according to scriptures. Oh. We have a task on our hand. Because you know as, as, as I'm going, I must confess, as I'm going kind of through the series. I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. I find myself metamorphosizing, I'm changing. My, I'm telling you, I'm changing. My mindset is changing. 
how I approach God, I'm changing. I'm becoming a different person. Because I realized for a long time I've been in church, but I wasn't doing uh, anything according to Scripture. I, w- I was just going through the motion. I was just going through the motion. But woo! God, it's, it tastes good, girl. I'm telling you, it feels better. I, I know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm owning what's happening. I feel like I have more, a better understanding. I'm growing, Mother Booze, in my faith. I'm, he, yes, I'm building myself up in my most holy faith. And I want that to happen to all of us in this house. When you go to God, go to God, say, Lord, thy word declares. You don't have to know the whole Bible. Take one verse. God cannot deny himself and he is his word. So when you go to God, says, Lord, your word says. Your word says. Uh, They shall come against me one way, but they shall flee seven ways. It is your word says. I feel God in my soul. You don't have to fight it. Let God's word do it. God, your word says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. It is your word says, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. It is your word that says, You shall be the head and not the tail above and not beneath. It is your word that says, Lo, I'm with you always. You said it. And you are not a man that you should lie. It is your word that says in Deuteronomy, I will not allow the plagues of the Egyptians to come upon you. It is your word that says it. It is your word that says it. It is your word that says it. It is your, it's your word that says it. Never allow your ear to be turned away from the word of the Lord. And then, and then you, 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 what we find ourselves doing is bringing our will before God and then we, we church, we church, we churcherize it. And the blood of Jesus. Lord, I want you to do this in the name of Jesus. So, so it's really what we want, you know, but, but we sugarcoat it within the name of Jesus. And we polish it over with the blood. And it sounds good, you know. But at the core of it, it's a self-centered. It's a selfish motive. It's a selfish request. You must want what God wants for you. Look at Stephen. Look at Stephen Delano. You think it's an easy death to be stoned to death? It's a brutal killing. I don't know, except that God is with me. I am not sure I could do what Stephen does, did. That I'm being killed like that. And saying, Lord, forgive them. You will do it. You, you. <laughs> I'm sure you would do it. You, you, you're good Christians. Veronica, you're good Christian. Right now, if I come in here and start punch you all over the face and just start to hit you in your head with stone. You're like, oh Lord, bless brother Mattis. <laughs> Lord, bless the man of God. Uh, well, uh, you have to pray for me. I'm not, uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. But what am I saying in this? What's the message in this? Look at, this, at Stephen. That's when, that's when you're doing it God's way. Lord, forgive them. At the point of death, he realized, why be filled with hatred? Why be angry? Why? I'm dying anyway. Might as well I pray the prayer of forgiveness for them. Lord, forgive them. Woo! Let, when you leave here, leave here with Proverbs 28 in your bag, 28 and 9. If your ears be turned away from the scriptures, God says, don't even come praying. I don't like to hear it. It turns me off. It's, it smells bad. I'm sick of you just coming and wanting what you want. I'm sick of your selfish, self-centered, egotistical ways. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you Christians just wanting what you want. Lord bless me. Lord bless me. Lord bless me. Lord bless me so I can be fat. He's saying, I've had enough of that. I want you 
to want what I want. Any man turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even his priors are detestable. God said it tastes bad in my mouth. I spit it out. Let's go. Second thing, I got seven to get to you. Unconfessed sins. It blocks your prior every time. Unconfessed sins blocks our prayers every time. As I was going through this, I was making sure I said, God, Purge me, oh Lord. No, my heart, I pray. Try me, oh Savior. No, my thoughts, I pray. Oh, raise it up. Oh, see if there be. Oh, some weak is in me. Cleanse me. Everybody say it. Cleanse me from every sin and set me. So it is, it is more than just, it is more than Saying something, unconfessing. To confess is to acknowledge, is to admit. It is to come into acknowledgement. One of the problems we have as a people sometimes is just the difficulties, the challenge to acknowledge we are wrong. God says if you're going to be a Christian, you must be able to acknowledge that you, when, when you are wrong. And be able to say to Maria, Maria, what I said was... I was, I'm sorry about it. It's too difficult for Christians to apologize sometimes. It should be our nature. Parents to children. Children to parents. Husbands to wives. Wives to husbands. Friends to friends. You should. It shouldn't be so difficult. that We find it almost impossible to say. Uh, and when, when sin is in us. The Bible says when it is finished. That's why you have to confess it. You have to get rid of it because when it is finished. You go, watch this. The Bible says, Henry, that when it's done doing what it's doing, it kills your dead. My mind then goes into gear and I'm thinking then, I wonder what all of that entails up to death. It ultimately kills you. So obviously... Until it kills you, it weakens you. You're miserable. You're in the hospital. You're hurting. You're perplexed. You're everything that results in death until death finally happens. When it is finished, it kills you. That word, when it is finished, would suggest that it's at work. And that's the, that's the problem. That's why you got to get rid of it. You can't allow it to be in you and be at work. It, it should never be, get it out, 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 get it out. For if I regard iniquity, Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, it blocks my prayer. It blocks my prayer. You, God is not going to hear us with sin in our heart. You're praying from a, a bad place. You're praying from a polluted place. You're praying from a heart that's unconverted, that's unregen unregenerated. You're praying from a dead place. Your heart is bitter. You're praying out of your bitterness, your anger. You're praying out of hatred. You're praying out of malice. You're praying out of hurt. Oh, he says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord is not going to hear me. I'm just beating the ear. I'm just beating the ear. I'm going to church and Lord, I'm loud and I'm praying and give me the mic. But if I'm praying out of a heart that's unsincere, insincere, it's a heart that's not sincere. God says, of a truth, I'm not hearing you. Something for us to consider today. Unforgiveness is another blocker. Blocker number three, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will hinder your prayer all day 
every day. Children, you hear me. Adults, you hear me. Brother, sister, you hear me. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. You have to forgive if you intend to go to God and, he, and, and, and see the result of what you ask for. You have to forgive. Let things go. Let people go so you can live. <laughs> Shamaha. I said, let people go so you can prosper. Let things go so you can breathe. Let things go that you don't have to go on medication. Let things go so you can let go of tablets. Let things go. Because one of the things that seek you is unforgiveness. One of the things that leaves you in turmoil and pain is unforgiveness. Let things go. <laughs> Got to let things go. Oh, brother, that is easier said than done. Let it go. Oh, brother, and, and you don't even know, brother, it's not because you let it go. And the bad thing is oftentimes, though the perpetrator is already gone living their life, they're happy, and here you are poisoned unto death. Let it go. Let it go. And God says, if you don't let it go, when you stand before me to pray, I will not hear you. For as long as it takes you to forgive, that's how long it takes me to forgive you. That's how I want you to interpret that text. Go to Mark 11 and 25, and when you stand praying, if you have ought against anyone, that your Father may also forgive you, you should let it go. You should forgive that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. Forgive so that you may be forgiven. If you're wondering, Lord, Lord why I've been praying about this. This is practical. People praying about the hurt that they have succumbed for a long time. And every time you talk about it, the hurt, the, the pain is still there. The pain is still there. They're talking about it and they can't even get through two sentences. It breaks them. The pain is still there. Can you talk about it? Without the pain sticking in your side. So let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You're not unique. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be insensitive, but, but, but you're not unique. A lot of people are dealing with tough stuff. <laughs> you will be shocked to know what some folk are dealing with, what some people came through. What some people came through, if you entered it, it would have killed you. And they're still dancing. And they're still shouting. Oh, for the devil meant it for evil. <laughs> but God meant it for good. I'm telling you, God is able to take a mess and make a message out of it. God is able to take a bad thing and make good of it. I'm telling you. Oh, when the devil says no, God says yes. He's working for you. And if God be for you. <laughs> I said if God be for you. No matter what nobody says. If God be for you. Nobody can be against you, man. Nobody can be against you. Disciples went to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray, Lord. He says, when you pray, pray after this manner. This is the model I want you to use. And a part of that model says, forgive us our sins. As we forgive those that sin against us. <laughs> so all of you who haven't forgiven nobody for, and you're still holding them up now since 2003.
all of you now who have people that you haven't let go since 1990. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! For as long as it will take you, you are hindering yourself. You are shooting yourself in the foot. You are blocking your blessing. Yeah? There's a song that we always sing back in the old church uh, to, to block my blessing. What is it again? To block my blessing. Black my blessing. Something about black my blessing. Only you can block your blessing. Only you can block your blessing. You know how you're blocking it? Unforgiveness. My God, I'm almost done. Three more, three more after this. You will hinder your prayer if you dishonor your spouse. Some of you are not married yet, but you're about to be married. As a matter of fact, before I get to talking about that, let's say this. If you cannot forgive, don't marry. Put that camera on me. Let me talk to somebody out there. I know you love him. I know you love Lord God, you love her. You love her like how Jesus loved little children. But if you cannot forgive, don't marry. Don't marry. Oh, we've been married now for 24 years. Let me tell you what, what is the result of that. Forgiveness. Those 24 years are as a result of something called forgiveness. Don't go in there if you cannot forgive. God says one of the things that hinders your prayer, blocks your answer. And you're beating the ear. You're praying away, but nothing is happening. It's because you have no respect one to the other. You're dishonoring one the other. Let's hear what Peter says. First Peter 3 and 7. Knowledge given, a oopsie, honor unto the wife. You should, yes, as the weaker vessel and as being hears together of the grace of life, that your purrs be not hindered. You must give honor that your prayers be not hindered. I was looking at that. If you go home, look at 1 Peter 3. I was amazed. Peter was saying to them, you who have unsaved husbands, you are supposed to respect him, to submit to him in such a way that you will cause him to become converted and you will not have to speak a word. My God Almighty. I run down stairs. I said, Joyce, you heard what Peter says? Peter says, Woo! Woo! Let's go. First Peter 3. Let's go. Good God. First Peter 3. First Peter 3. I have a good preacher friend who, will, who would always say, lest you go say the man say. I don't want you to say the man say. I want you to say the word of God says. My God from heaven. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband. That if any obey not the word, as in the husband, if the husband is not a believer. <laughs> They also may, without the word being spoken. James says, you won't have to say to him, you know, I'm going to church this morning. Every morning, you just, you get up on David, get up on God church. Get up, man, get up, get up, come, get up on God church, man. Get up, you just lazy, so you lazy. Get up, man, get up. Get up, man. Every day, so the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. That's if you don't want him to be saved. That's, that's if you don't want him to be back. I feel God in my soul. That's when you don't want him to know Christ. Get, get up, man. If you feel love God, make you hate God. So get up, man. Get up. You, 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 love, you love drink and you love care. Why, why make you can't love Jesus? 
That's because you're ignorant to what Peter says. Peter says you won't have to speak one word if you love it. If you love, if you ever love that man, you say, the way God loves the world, you will never speak a word. And based on how you treat him, out of your submission to him, Peter said, read it for yourself. You will convert him. He was an unbeliever, but he becomes a believer, not in word, but he's smitten. I was saying this to Joyce, and Joyce said, well, that's as far as I go with you. But I'm going to go there with you today. My wife didn't come with me, but I hope you will. It has been said that all men are dogs. You ever heard it? Have you ever heard it? Y'all are Jamaicans. You have heard it? A lot of y'all are Americans. I'm going to teach you something. Some of you are Americans. Imani, they say, they say this thing. And let, me tell you, let me tell you what I, I know to be true. I'm from the country. I'm from the rural, impenetrable back bushes of St. Elizabeth. I'm proud. I had a lot of dogs in my yard. I know about dogs. You will leave Pepper Delano and see your dog in Santa Cruz. Yes, that's many miles. You wouldn't walk it. You will leave your house and see your dog up gutters. And say, Nabroni that. You know what got him up there? He was following after another dog. Love will cause a will cause a dog to, fought, to walk miles after another dog. What draws a man is love. It is hard, it is impossible to resist love. For God so loved the world. Don't underestimate the power of love. That's really what they're talking about. That's the truth of what they're saying. A man is will so that, that's why you, when you talk about when the Bible says the wife should submit and the husband should love and you find it hard. But ain't nobody find it hard to submit to somebody who loves them. The power of love. Power of love. We want us to thrive in our relationships. And when people come here that are not married, they, that relationship blossoms into marriage. And people who are on the brink of divorce will reunite and rekindle. And people whose marriages are struggling will find life. I want this church under God to be a place where relationships prosper. Oh, somebody ought to clap their hands in here. We've been praying it. Not just between husbands and wives, but between mothers and children, between friends, man. We want relationships in this house to prosper. We want to develop lifelong friendship where I love you if you're up or you're down, if you're right or you're wrong. Love you like how Jesus loved us. Bible says, for scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet by adventure for a good man, some wouldn't even think about it. But God commendeth his love towards us. Even when we were sinners, he died for us. I'm almost done. Doubt will block your prayer. Every time, all day, every day, if you are doubtful, it will block your prayer. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Impossible. So when you go to God, go to God believing it's possible with God. Everybody in here is saved. With God, it's possible. Everybody in here is blessed. With God, it's possible. I see you blessed. You look good, that song you love. In the future, I, I see you. In the future. And you look better. When you look at me, how do you see me five years from now? Somebody holler better. better. Lord God. When I look at you, Shanice, if the Lord tarries 
three years, two weeks, a month from now, how do I see you blessed and highly favored, better? I see you better. Jada, I see you better. I see you better, Wonder. I see you growing in your faith. I see you as a strong Christian. I see you. Uh, oh, uh, I see you, Delano, and your friend. I see you better. Better. Because I'm looking through the eyes of God. When God looked at us, we were not a people. So why is it so hard for us to forgive? Why is it so hard for us to love? When God loved us, we were like dogs and sorcerers. Far, Jennifer, from the commonwealth of Israel. We were polluted in our own blood. We weren't a people. So all of a sudden you become so critical. Why are we? Well, I should be critical of her. And Oh, you see that one. And No, no. Somebody holler, no. Holler, love on people. Love people up. Pray them up and don't talk them down. Paul says, my little children with whom I travail until Christ is formed in you. It means to tarry long. You know how long it took some of us to get to where we are and we're not, we're not, we're not know we are yet? Somebody says, I have five minutes to go. Let's, let's finish this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. James 5, 1 to 7, that giveth to all men freely or liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith. God will give freely, but you must ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, just tossed to and fro by the wind. Verse number 7 says, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Don't think you're going to uh, you get anything from the Lord because you ask it. And because of your verbosity and you're full of church slangs. And you know how to use the church slangs in prayer. Oh God, good God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ as we so come. Our eternal God. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God. Because after a while, you learn the slangs. You can repeat them without them meaning a thing. <laughs> the first, the last, the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending. Oh, El Shaddai. Oh, El Elyon, uh, Jehovah Tishkanu, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rafika. And you know all of that, and it sounds good. No matter what a man can pray, man. <laughs> but void of faith, if it's void of faith, it means absolutely nothing. James says you're like a wave that's tossed to and fro. But you can use a word, one word, Father, have mercy. Let your will be done. Have mercy upon me, a sinner, God. Lord, move in the midst of it. Let the order of God be established in you, Rochelle. Shabaha satarabahaya. Idarabaho shanda. Begin to turn the hearts of the people to you, O oh God. Move them in their homes right now, wherever they are. Let them feel your love. Let them know that you love them more than they'll ever be loved in their lifetime. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Faith, believing, yes. Two and I'm done. You can't pray with selfish, self-centered motives, hypocritical motives. James again says, when you ask, you don't receive what you ask because you ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your own lust. You're asking it with selfish motives to fatten yourself, to boast. Lord, bless me with that house over there, Lord. Jesus, that when Sister Shanice comes, she says, What a big house you have. Lord, I want to drive a Benz that when, when I pull up a church, you say, Lord, everybody say, Lord, are you look so good? <laughs> Lord, bless me. Bless me. Oh, God, bless me, Lord. Bless me that when I put myself together, 
And that's why if you go back to James chapter 3, James chapter 3 says, it was talking about the wife again and the woman. She says, he was saying, don't, don't get, be caught up in pretty. The plaiting of your hair and the braiding of your hair and your jewelry. Don't try to attract anybody to you from the outward base and pretty. He says you, it must be beautiful. You see, these prior blockers that I'm preaching to you today about is a heart condition. It's a heart issue. If you look on everything relating to this, it's really a heart issue. It's, it's an inward issue. Beauty is of the heart. Beauty is of the heart. You should never love her because of how she looks outwardly. But you love her inwardly because of what God will accomplish and is accomplishing in her life. And loving her based on how God sees her. If you can't love her like that, walk away. Walk away. If you can't love your children like that, walk away. Because there's going to be a day when they wake up. Can you love them after they wake up when the makeup is off and the hair is off? Ladies can take, all right, you know what? I won't, I won't go there. I won't go there. But the idea is it's inward. It's inward. I'm loving you because you're beautiful inwardly. I love your spirit, your meek spirit. You're not cantangorous. You're peaceful. You're a peacemaker. You love God. There's a place in you. I love that the you have. You give. You, you, you respect your Lord. You have a relationship with him. What do you love about her? What do you love about him? Woo! I love that you love God. Hey! What you're asking, you don't get it because you're asking it with the wrong motive. Lord, give us a big church. Lord, give us a big church, full out Jesus. So everybody can say, boy, so Andrew can teach. Man, and I do well, man, and I, no, 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 that's wrong, the wrong motive. When you say let your kingdom come so that they will know who God is. I'm gonna, I've got to let you go. But Lord, I hear the scriptures in my head. I hear the scriptures, Delano. When David went down before Saul to fight him. Saul clothed him in his army with shield and breastplate and sword. Get the, Saul got him ready for war, man. Because how can you go out to fight Goliath? You're what a youth. Goliath is a man of war. He's a warrior from birth. He's been trained to kill. He's a weapon. He's a Philistine weapon. They can bring this one man out to fight an army. He's trained to kill. And so Saul got David dressed. And David said, I can't go in this. I've not proven it. I've not proven it. That's not where I'm going. And when David went down before Saul, uh, the Philistine, the Bible said that the Philistine disdained him. The Philistine was, was, the Philistine was embarrassed. The Philistine was embarrassed that I'm a man trained to kill and you bring a dog before me. And listen to what David said. My spirit rose up in me. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. David said, the Lord will deliver you in my hand today. And I'm going to take your head from your body. And when it is done, they shall all know that there's a God in Israel. After you would have gotten victory over your enemy, it's not for you to boast. It's that they'll know your God. It's that they will know that your God is victorious. It's so that they'll know that you're saved, you're called, and you're highly favored. You're armed and you're dangerous. David said, I'm going to kill you. 
and it will be remembered for all generations that God exists. I don't want my victory for people to know that I'm victorious. Don't give me no victory. Don't give me no victory as if I'm going to come down here to boast and talk about, Lord, the Lord bless me and woo. But I want when I'm blessed, when I, whatever victory, whatever God accomplishes in your life, it must be so that they will know. So that they will know that there's a God answering your prayer. And they're saying, my God, Shouldn't she be crying? Shouldn't she be in distress? Is that Shanice? After all you've been through, you should let people know, I'm still here. The Lord is good. Look what the Lord has done. Look how God has brought me out. I'm done. Let's go. But let's, let's take Matthew. Let's take Matthew. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they're going to be heard for their much speaking, you see. God says, I'm not hearing them. Pray away. Pray away. I'm not hearing you. You, you, you think because you're using church jargons, I'm hearing you? Oh, Oh, I saw your thing. You, you think because it sounds good, I'm hearing you. It's void of faith. It's hypocritical. You're doing it to be seen. And I'm not into that. When you pray, go into your closet. And don't leave the door closed. Close the door. After you have closed the door, talk to me in secret. And I who hear in secret, I'm going to bless you openly. The last one. Prayer blocker is lack of love. If you're praying from a heart that's void of love, God is not going to hear you. I have scripture for that. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself. <laughs> but I ain't going to hear you. You can't just want it for yourself. And when you see your brother, you can't even afford to say, Lord, help them. Help them. Be aware. Seven things. Pray according to his will. Unconfessed sins will block your prayers. Hmm? Unforgiveness will block your prayers. Hmm? If you disrespect your spouse, that's going to block your prayer. Doubt is going to block your prayer. Selfish motives and hypocrisy will block your prayer. And the lack of love will always block your prayer. I feel like we're going to be praying and people going to get answers. Because the blockage has been cleared. The blockage has been cleared. We have burst through these blockages. Lord, have mercy. We have burst through these blockages in Jesus' name. And victory! Go back to that slide. Tell them what's coming. Tell them what's coming to their homes and their lives and their families. When you begin to pray through these blockages. Tell them what's coming. Oh, did nobody hear you? Shout it! Where is it coming? Where is it coming? To my life. To my family, to my children, to my city, to my church, to my county, to America, to Jamaica, to the world. Revival is coming to New Rochelle. Somebody clap your hands. Give God victory. Oh, we are done. You may be standing. You may be standing. Could you kindly stand? Revival is coming. Revival is coming. It's not by might or by power, but it is by my spirit, say it the Lord. It's by my spirit, say it the Lord. Hallelujah. It is by my spirit. 
the Lord of heaven bless you today. It was such a pleasure to have you coming. And show that the Lord spoke to us. Show that the Lord sp spoke to us. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I want this to be your church home. And, 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 and I want you to come on down here. We're lending ourselves to the process. We're lending ourselves to the process. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, no worries. Just come down here. Let's grow together. Let's love on each other. Let's love God and see what he will do. Place that's void of judgment and void of being critical, void of, I want, I want it to be a, a free space where people can come and express themselves before their God. I want them to come to the well and drink freely without hindrance, without anybody just getting in the way. Come feed their souls, go back home. Bring your children, have them grow in the presence of the Lord, in the house of the Lord. In his presence, there's fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there are pledges forevermore. When you go back home this week to pray, remember this sermon. To pray. Sometimes, when you pray this week, let it be four words. Four words. What is that? Thy will be done. You don't have to pray for long. You won't be heard for your much speaking. What you're saying is, thy will be done. In me, O oh God, in earth as it is in heaven, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. I want to pray with you. We, ha we call this place in this colored tile here, our altar for now, the place where we gather to pray. Come down here, let's pray together. If you have anything you want me to join in with Pearl, with you on. If you have any, anything that you've been praying about, I just want to stand in agreement with you. If you are not saved, let me tell you something. This is the best place to be. I'm telling you, man, I'm, I've committed myself, and we have people in here who have done the same, committed themselves to the teaching and the preaching of God's word and to just loving God's people and see his will being done in our lives. I want God's will to be done I want God's will to be done. We want this to be a place that is akin to your destiny. A place that you will proudly say, man, that's my church. Because you can go there and your soul can be fed. And you can meet with your God. Please come down here and, and join me. If you're not saved, guess what? I want to pray with you until it happens. I'm speaking it. No worries, no worries. Pastor, I'm not yet baptized. That's all right. I want to pray over you. I want to pray over you. I want to pray with you. Oh, if you're here, come with me. Come down here. I'm not saved, Rev, but I would love to give my heart to the Lord. I would so love to give my heart to the Lord. Oh, lovey. God bless you. And I would never allow my brother to come down here and not pray with him. Eddie, come on down here. You want to come, Tanda? Feel free, baby. Come on down here. Let's pray together. One of the things you do when your visitors come, you pray with them. Respect, man. It's good to see you. Good to, good to see you. Good to see you. Tanda, it's good to see you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. You are and Omega. And Omega. Ivy, you want to come and pray with me, Ivy? Come down here. Let's we pray together too. You One of the things we do with our guests, God. we pray with them. You see, you the best thing I can offer, I want you to pray for me and I pray for you. What I want for myself is what I want for you. I believe that God is for us. Oh! We give you all, all, all the glory. Feel free to come. Glory. Feel free to come. Oh, yes, George, feel free to come, son. We worship right. you, oh God. You are worthy. You 
are, you are worthy, worthy to be prayed. Mm. We give you Love and trust. 
trust Him daily, daily in His word. I surrender all. I surrender. I surrender. surrender all. Oh, I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my Blessed Savior, I surrender all. It's not my will, but I'll be done. Praise Jesus. Let the same be mine every day for when this robe this robe of flesh that I wear to make me falter guide my steps hold my hand all the way oh it's not my will but i'll be done praise jesus and let the same prayer be mine every day This robe, this robe of flesh that I will would make me falter. Guide my steps, Lord. Hold my head all the way. Oh, it's not my will, but thou. Be done. Praise Jesus. Let this same prayer be mine every day. For when this robe, this robe of flesh that I what's wrong and make it right. Ah, 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 ah. Days 
stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Oh, lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door oh let me know your wisdom and show me things i've never seen before can take what's wrong and make it right, make it right, day star show, anywhere you open up the door. And show me things I've never seen before. Lord, I want to be a witness. Oh, you can take what's wrong and make it right. Uh, Shine on me. Oh, let your love shine through me in the night.